the previous video, we looked at flow work or flow energy and how we should add the term PV or P by rho to a fluid that is moving into or out of a control volume. So we will use this to now uh, write formally the first law for open systems or for control volumes. And we will see some simplified cases where we might be able to simplify this first law as we write it for open systems, right? So um, first law. For a generalized system uh, that may look somewhat like that, So let's assume that I have a system uh, that interacts with the surroundings in all possible manners, right? So it has work interactions, it has heat interactions, and it also has mass coming in and mass going out. It may have more than one inlet or more than one exit, right? So for example, in this system that is shown by the red dashed line, um, I can have mass coming in at this location and at this location. I can have mass going out here and here. Uh, there's some heat entering the system here, uh, heat leaving the system here, heat entering here, or work entering here, and uh, the system is doing work on the surroundings there. So um, I, I, this is a general form of a system that can have uh, multiple interactions going on at the same time. So if I write the energy conservation for this system, then I must have uh, energy coming in minus the energy going out should be equal to the change in energy of the system, right? The energy, um, let's say I watch the system over a period of time delta T and during this time delta T, let's say the energy that came into the system was E in, energy that went out of the system is E out uh, and the change in energy of the system is delta E system, right? So uh, if I differentiate this, then in other words, I can also write E dot in uh, minus E dot out should be equal to DE system DD. In other words, the rate at which energy enters the system uh, minus the rate at which the energy leaves the system or the control volume should be equal to the rate of change of energy of the system. And uh, Again, I can uh, break up uh, E in into three components. One coming in because there is a heat interaction, one coming in because there is a work interaction, and uh, one coming in because there is mass entering the system. And so I can uh, sort of split it up into three, and uh, let me split it up this way. Due to heat interaction, I have Q in here and uh, due to work interaction, I have uh, W in here and due to mass entering uh, the system, I have here, I have two inlets. So I can do summation over all inlets, uh, M dot times H plus uh, V square by 2 plus GZ. Right, And uh, this M dot is particular to the particular inlet. So for example, uh, there is a particular M dot here, then I got to multiply that M dot with 
the fluid enthalpy at that location uh, plus the velocity squared by 2 plus the reference uh, multiplied by the g at that location. So, it is specific to that particular inlet, right. Similarly, I got to take the h, the v and the z values at the other inlet when I add that and multiply that with the m dot, right. So, in here specifically it would be uh, let us call this uh, let us say point 0.1, let us call this point 0.2, point 0.3 and point 0.4, right. So, it would be m dot 1 times h1 plus v1 square by 2 plus gz1 plus m dot 2 times h2 plus v2 square by 2 plus gz2, right. I am just uh, assuming that there are only two inlets, but if there are more, uh, you can see the pattern, right. So, I do the summation over all inlets, but at each point, I got to take the mass flow rate, the enthalpy, velocity and the, um, the height at that location uh, of the inlet, right. And this of course is q in and w in and uh, I can break this again into uh, there is a heat interaction and that is uh, q out here. So, that is q out and then there is a work interaction that is w out. So, w out and uh, there is also mass leaving and uh, so I can write a similar integral here uh, similar summation. Uh, summation over all outlets m dot times h plus v square by 2 plus g z, right. And uh, this of course is d e system d t, right. So, uh, if I write it down, then I have uh, q in plus w in plus sigma over all inlets m dot times h plus v square by 2 plus g z um, minus q out plus w out plus sigma over all outlets m dot times h plus v square by 2 plus g z um, should be equal to d e system d t. Oh, so, this should be q dot, all of these should be dots uh, because we are talking about rates and so therefore, they are all in, uh, they are all, the units are all in joule per second or in watts. So, I got to have a dot in there, right. So, I can write it this way. Um, For a steady state, for steady flow, uh, I can uh, get rid of all the time derivatives. So, that is d d t of anything is 0, right. So, and that therefore, I can get rid of this right hand side and for a steady flow system, I have uh, uh, q dot in plus w dot in plus sigma over all inlets m dot h plus v square by 2 plus g z um, minus q out plus w dot out plus sigma over all outlets m dot times h plus v square by 2 plus g z equals 0, right. And uh, I know that q dot in minus q dot out that is q dot net, right. So, that is just q dot because in my sign convention the uh, heat added to the system is positive and so therefore, I can I can q dot in minus q dot out remember there is a negative sign here. So, q dot in minus q dot out I just write it as q dot, right. And then uh, I write w dot out minus w dot in as uh, w dot. So, I get a negative w dot equals um, here sigma in m dot uh, 
sigma out times h plus v square by 2 plus g z um, minus sigma in m dot h plus v square by 2 plus g z. So, this is for steady flow device. Right? If we do have a steady flow, then I can do q dot minus w dot equals um, this energy entering, uh, energy leaving, rate of energy leaving minus rate of energy entering because there is a mass that is entering or leaving uh, the system, right. And uh, <clears throat> ah, okay. So, this is uh, the generalized form of a steady flow device and uh, in the next videos, we will be looking at some specific examples and see how to apply this in real world scenarios. Mm -hmm.